So this example uses the concept of a sampling distribution and the central limit theorem. Um, in this case, we have a random variable that is, um, in this case, white blood cells. We are going to assume that it has an approximately normal distribution with a certain mean and a certain standard deviation. And we want to test if the white blood cell count of a person is um, of less than 3,500 is an indication of leukopenia. Um, which is an indication of bone marrow depression that may be a result of a viral infection. So we're going to actually test some information about that, but let's start off with some of the preliminary things that we have to do. So as always, your first step is to state your random variable. Again, that is what we measured. So let's look at what we actually are measuring in this case, and we are measuring the white blood cell count of whole blood. So. There's a random variable. Now we would like to find the probability that on a single test x is less than 3500. So again, with every probability statement, it's best to first rewrite it in a probability mathematical statement. So we want the probability that x is less than 3500. To answer this question, we need to first look at what the picture of this is. We are told that x is normally distributed. So we will draw a normal curve. We are told that the mean of this normal curve is 7,500. And on here, it's best to put in where 3,500 is. So 3,500 is less than 7,500. So I'll put it somewhere below to it, somewhere to the left of it. And then we are looking at being less than, so we'll shade below it. Um, again, if you're using a TI calculator, you can use the um, normal CDF. If you're using um, any other technology, then you would use whatever technology you would do to find this. So the normal CDF, you are from negative infinity, that's where the shading starts, up to 3500, that's where the shading ends. Your mean is 7500 and your standard deviation is 1750. So you again go into the distor menu, get the normal CDF, um, type in your negative 1 E99, your 3500, your mean of 7500, and your standard deviation of 1750. And so we get a probability of 0.011. Um, that's pretty small, so um, most likely that would be bad if somebody had this, but doctors are a little bit more um, worrisome about treating people with things they don't really have. So some doctors might actually average two tests taken a week apart. Um, if we want to find the probability that the sample mean is less than 3,500, we first need to know what is the probability distribution of the sample mean. Again, this goes to the concept of a sampling distribution. Really, all that answers is, if I draw an x-axis here, what curve can I draw above this? And actually, this will no longer be the x-axis because we're now talking about the sample mean. So now being the x-bar axis, what picture can I draw? Well, the central limit theorem tells me that if the um, distribution of the original random variable is normally distributed, then the distribution of x bar will also be normally distributed no matter how big n is. So since we were told that x was normally distributed, x bar will also be normally distributed. Same center. The nice thing about um, this information is the center of x bar is the same as the center of the original random variable, so it's still 7,500. The difference is, is that it actually becomes a much peaked, more peaked um, curve, and there's actually, um, because the standard deviation changes. So we want to look at my standard deviation of x bar and find out what that is. Because the standard deviation is changing, it's changing by a factor of square root of n in the denominator. So our original random variable was 1750, sorry, 
our original standard deviation of a random variable was 1750, and n is how many tests did they do? In this case, they did two. So n would be two. So our standard deviation in this case would be about approximately 1237.44. Now, again, we want to find the probability of the sample mean, so let's rewrite that in a mathematical statement. Probability that the sample mean, the symbol is x bar, is less than 3,500. Again, using whatever technology you want to use, you'll find the, this probability. Your lower limit, let's put this on here. Here's 3,500, and we're shading to the left because we're less than. So your lower limit is again negative infinity or negative 1e99. Upper limit is 3500. Your mean is 17, I'm sorry, 750. Sorry, 7500. But your standard deviation is new. The standard deviation is this one we just came up with. This value here, that's your new standard deviation. You do no longer use the 1750 your new standard deviation is the 1237.44. So we'll go through and do this calculation. Um, you can, if you want to, by the way, um, put 1750 divided by the square root of 2 in your formula, and that way you don't cause as much rounding error. This time we get 0 0.000614. So notice the probability has changed a bit when we did this. So we can see our probability has gotten smaller. Um, that is because the standard deviation got smaller. So therefore, you have more um, of the curve closer in to the center. Um, let's keep going, though. Maybe the doctor is really conservative. That's a pretty small probability. But maybe you have a doctor really conservative, and they decide to do three tests. So they decide to do another test, um, three um, a week apart, so three tests a week apart. Um, we want to find again the probability that the sample mean is less than 3,500. So let's rewrite that in a mathematical statement. I don't think we need to actually write or draw a picture this time. I think we've got the picture down. Um, it's the same picture, it's just some things are changing. So again, using your technology, I'm going to use the TI-83s or 84s. My lower limit is negative 1e99, or negative infinity. My upper limit would be 3,500. My center is still the 7,500. But my standard deviation is no longer the 1750. It's the 1750 divided by the square root of 3 this time, because n is now 3. So again, you take out your handy-dandy calculator, or whatever technology you happen to be using. Go through that calculation, and you end up with a probability of 0 0.000038. So that's an incredibly small probability. Um, it would be very unlikely for you to do three tests a week apart each, um, find the sample mean of those three tests, and get a sample mean that's less than 3,500. So let's look at the last part. Um, it would like us to compare your answers in part B, C, and D, and how did the probabilities change as n increased? So if you look back, you'll notice that our probabilities got much smaller as n was getting bigger. So as n increased, the probability that x bar, or x for that matter, is less than 3,500 decreased. Um, if a person had a sample mean less than 3,500 based on three tests, what conclusion would you draw? Well, given that this is really, really unlikely to happen, we have what we call the rare events rule in mathematics and statistics. Um, and it says that if you are less than a certain value, usually it's around 5%, then you would say that's unusual. So our probability in this case is much less than 5%. So based on the rare events rule, the 
this event is very unusual. So one of the things that you would look at is realize that, hey, maybe this person we thought was healthy, if they're healthy, they shouldn't have a sample mean this low. And since we got a sample mean this low, and that's really unlikely, my guess is the person is not healthy. So most likely the person has. Has leukopenia. Penia. And they should be tested. That's all there is to it.